Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is RGB. Y'all are on the I Really Mean It podcast. Today is Friday, December the 15th of 2017. Like I've told y'all, we're getting to the end of this year and we're looking towards, we've got, we've already set our pathway towards 2018. Hope you guys have had a phenomenal week, man. There's a lot going on, uh, as you can imagine, but, um, so glad that you could join on today. Uh, today will be impactful, but it will be uh, fairly brief. I want to get right to the point. Um, for those of you that are listening to the podcast, on whether you're on SoundCloud or Google Play or Spotify, uh, you're on YouTube, however that you're engaging this podcast, we're also live here on Facebook Live. Uh, so I'll be shouting out people uh, on Facebook Live as well. Uh, Don Watson, good afternoon to you. Elliot the Maine, which you know, I, I want to get into a show where I can get Elliot on to talk about Maine. He's been uh, on this campaign uh, getting involved. Uh, there's been a little bit of hypocrisy, uh, what I'll call it, with the word Maine, uh, where people are spelling it with the Y. And uh, I know Elliot's been uh, on top of that uh, on a, a number of different fronts, man. So uh, it's been funny. Uh, frat brother of mine, uh, Terrence Howard, who y'all know, actor Terrence Howard, was uh, part of some of that uh, last weekend. And so uh, it was funny to see Elliot get involved from his brand. And he's done a great job with uh, countering some of that and uh, making sure that he educates this world on the use of the word Maine from Memphis. Mickey Renee, hey, how you doing? Good afternoon to you as well, uh, joining on the podcast. So let's get right into it. Um, what I'm going to do over these next three shows, starting today and the next shows that round out uh, 2017, these next three Fridays, I want to get into winning the chip in 2018. Now, when we say chip, that's a sports metaphor, particularly in basketball at the professional level, winning the championship. You guys call it winning the chip. So winning the championship, being a championship contender and a championship winner in 2018 is what I want to talk about. So specifically for today, uh, I want to talk about identifying yours. Okay, so identifying yours. Next week, we'll talk about planning yours. And then on the final week, we'll talk about executing yours. And what that encompasses is always my philosophy of to be successful, you have to be able to identify, you got to be able to plan, and you got to be able to execute. And then there's a fourth one that comes into play where you want to go back and then reassess that uh, as you move forward. So there's a reassessment period that takes place. But identify, plan, and execute is what we're going to be talking about to round out. And what I want to do is help all of us, myself included, as well as you as the listening audience, to um, be prepared and hopefully you've been working and doing some of this all along uh, because being prepared and ready for 2018 is not something you can do December 29th or 30th or 31st or whatnot. So it's something that hopefully you've been doing actually a good bit along this year and you're kind of now you're actually engaging in endeavors that's going to help you progress and move forward into some of the planning and execution phase. Hopefully you've already done the identification. But if you haven't, I'm, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help. And so I want to get right into it. So one of the things when you talk about, and I'm going to relate a lot of things to sports. So if you're not a sports fan, certainly please forgive me, but you'll be able to keep up and follow along. I'm not going to get into a bunch of stats and a bunch of uh, acronyms and all that kind of thing too much. But if you think just from a sports standpoint, take 2018, and 2018 is breaking down, broken down into 12 months, right? You have January all the way through December. And so because you have 12 months, you're also able to break it down into quarters. Kind of similar to a football or basketball game, right? And in a football or basketball game, typically, uh, especially at the professional level, it is four quarters, Right. So take your year, take your 2018 and, and think about it as I'm talking, um, take it and break it down to four quarters. You got the first quarter, January, February, March. Then you got second quarter, April, May, June, and you're going all along. And that's your year. So think of it as a game. When I play basketball, for example, um, one of the things that I knew and you learn over time and that my teammates knew is, you want to get off to a really good start in any game. 
if you feel like you've got superior talent and you feel like you've got a superior will and that kind of thing, you don't want to give the other team any hope, right? We would walk into some of these gyms. So we coming out of the mound. We walk into some of these gyms, right, and we're looking at the team. We know a little bit about them. We're like, man, these cats can't, you know, no, nah, they, they can't mess with us, right? But if we don't come in with the right mindset from the start of the game and we give them hope, you'll find yourself not only in a dogfight kind of game, but you might find yourself taking an L. You, you might find yourself losing. And so the whole key to it is you want to start the game um, on the right foot, which means you, you can't wait to do that when they tip the ball off. Okay, that happens in practice. That help happens in the off season. That happens with everything leading up to that game. Your preparation. Do you understand your offense and your defense? Do you understand um, the other team's offense and defense and what they're going to try to do to you? And if you can anticipate that and have counters for that, you're not going to take away everything. Okay, but you have to know what you're willing to live with. Right. So in basketball, you're not going to, too many good teams, you're not going to stop them from driving past you to the rack, scoring in the post, or shooting the three. Right. You're not going to stop all of it if, if they're a good team. Right. You got to figure out there's going to be something you're going to give up. A skip pass across the court. There's only, it's five guys on their team, five guys on your team in basketball. So you're, you're not going to stop everything. So what you have to do is, you got to determine what it is that I can live with and what is that I cannot live with. What, where are my principles, right? If I'm not going to let them score in the paint, I'm going to make them shoot from the outside. If I don't want them shooting from the outside, I'm going to make them have to put the ball on the floor and go to the rack to have to score against me, then that's what I'm going to do. The same thing operates with you personally and professionally, right? And that's part of your identification is you've got to be able to identify before you even get to any of that, you got to identify why you're stepping on the floor in the first place. You know, I see things on, on Facebook a lot of times and, um, you know, personally and professionally, some things are just downright funny. And then other things are, are really interesting. And um, a lot of people have great business ideas. They come up with great ideas. Um, they're able to, in, in a lot of cases, articulate them very well. Um, and in some cases, they may be fairly well thought out, but then they don't execute on it, right? You've got people that, you know, uh, from a relationship standpoint, personally, um, you've got a slew of people that want to be married, right? Or they want to have some kind of significant relationship, but they never execute on it. So then the question becomes is, you know, why? And it generally relates back to, have you identified what it is that you want in the first place? Not based on what mama wants, not based on what sister has, not based on what cousin said, not based on grandmama, not based on mother so-and-so at the church and all this kind of thing. Have you identified what it is that you want? Same in your business. You want to go into business to do this or to do that. Why? Right? You've got to understand what it is that you want to do, how are you identifying that? But it starts with the question, why? Right? And then how do you answer that question, why? Okay? If you're going to play sports, you're going to play basketball, and we're going to go down and we're going to play, you know, just throw something out. We're going to play Central High School, right? So when I came up, we played Central High School, and John Grice was their guy. J what up, JG? All right, so we're going to go play them. Why? Right? They're in our division. Right, if we're in the 16 AAA or whatever the hell it was, um, they're on our schedule. We want to play them, and we're going out with the idea that we're going to win, whether we're in their gym or in our gym. Don't matter, right? So you've you've identified your why. You know, we want to go and win because we want to add a W to our win column. That's going to take us that much further to being prepared for what the end game, the playoffs. Right. You want to be married. Right. Why? Because everybody else is because folk bothering me about it because I had my children out of wedlock, you know, and that didn't work out because I want to be part of the club. 
I see other folk married. I won't be able to go to the married couple stuff too. I can't go because I can't get the knucklehead to, you know, he, he don't cooperate, she don't cooperate. What, what's your motivation, right? Your motivation tells a lot of what your intent is. And so that's my next thing. And part of your identification is you got to define what it is. You know what I find out in managing people? I manage 93 people every day. What I find out about people is people don't like to define things. People like to go off their emotion, right? How they feel. And people get upset when you ask them to define something. So something happens. Let's take anything in the world that can happen. And one of the first things I do, and anybody that's worked with me or for me knows, is I'm going to ask you, quantify that. Okay? I'm going to ask you to quantify it. What does that mean when I say quantify it? Well, what that means is, um, when you come and tell me, uh, RGB, uh, every time I go in there is something wrong. Okay. Every time. Yeah. So define it for me. How many times is it? Is it indeed every single time you go in there, there's a problem. Is it once a day? Is it once a week? Once a month? Once a quarter? Once a year? Is it maybe never? And it's just your perception, Right. In, as, or are you just engaged in pettiness? What is, you know, define it for me. So you, you have to define, you know, what it is that you're looking to identify. So in that case, if you want to be married, you got to define what that looks like for you. Not what it looks like for anybody else, anything, you know, what anybody else says or what's in the media. What does that look like for you? You got to quantify that. You want to be married when? With what kind of man, what kind of woman? You want to start this business? What kind of business are, are you going to have? How does it differentiate from anybody else that's in that field? Right? Whatever endeavor that it is that you're doing, right, you want to be great at basketball. Why? What does that mean? You just want to be good so that folk in the stands can, can watch you and cheer for you? Do you want to be good because your dad was not that good or your dad was really good and you're following in his footsteps? Whatever that is. And I'm not here to tell you what's right or wrong, right? I'm just here to help you get, gain that understanding so that you're ready. So before you do anything, you've got to define it, right? And then you've got to quantify that definition. Everything's not just about solely numbers and things like that. But, you know, y'all, you've got to, you know, define it and then you've got to quantify it, Okay. And so that's the first thing that it starts off with is if you don't do that, getting into the planning and the execution, this is why people say a lot of stuff, they post a lot of stuff, and then you don't see no results. So they're in this perpetual, that, that's where everything becomes hashtag goals, right? And I'm going to step on a few toes with some stuff. That's where it becomes hashtag goals. It's been hashtag goals in 2013. It was hashtag goals in 2014. It was hashtag goals in 2015. It was hashtag goals in 2016. It was hashtag goals this year. It's going to be hashtag goals next year. It's going to be hashtag goals in 2019. It's just, it's a perpetual thing, right? And so you got to define and quantify for yourself. So again, whether it's in sports, from the basketball standpoint, analogy that I gave, in your business, you've got to, again, you've got to define that. So does it meet your skill sets? That's part of your definition. What's your skill set? I remember doing business loans, right? And when one of the things that's going to hurt you in doing any kind of business loan is when you don't have the demonstrated skill set. It's not to say that you can't get it, but when you get people that just jump on trends, and that's what happens is you get people, you know, like you get people that want to start a restaurant just because, um, someone told them they could cook at Thanksgiving. You know, so they liked your dressing at Thanksgiving and they think that you should open a dressing uh, restaurant where you sell nothing but dressing. And they'll think that's a great idea. And, and who's to say whether it is or not, right? But there's so much more that goes into running a restaurant than just being able to cook, right? Because you cooking for your family or your friends is different than opening up a place where you got to deal with the business continuity, the inventory, uh, the hiring of people, um, all the materials, all the, you know, the raw materials that go into it, leasing a location, 
dealing with MLG and uh, W and all those folks. So if you don't properly identify and define what it is that you're trying to do, then you'll jump into that and you'll think, oh, well, it's a, um, you know, it, it's a good idea and I'm good at it, right? And people like to do and they enjoy doing things that they feel like they're good at. And in a lot of cases, they're, you know, influenced by the money of it. They're influenced by their, you know, wanting to maximize their lifestyle. Or they're influenced by trying to impress y'all, like these folks that, you know, uh, on Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of thing. And notice how this all uh, correlates with personal. You know, you want, you know, again, people want relationships. They want to be married. Why? They want to be able to tell other folks, right? You know, they want other folks to see it. What up, Justin Spencer? What's going on, brother? Daniel Watson, what's going on, man? And, you know, so they're motivated by these extrinsic things, right? That's why when, you know, if they do get married, right, they end up finding out that it's tough runs when those things expire. And they do. When, you, when you're motivated extrinsically like that, the first time you run into a roadblock, the first time you don't like what he say or uh, she don't like, you know, anything or, or he don't like what uh, she says or he said, whatever it is, the, you know, when the jokes are no longer funny, <laughs> right, you know, now you don't have anything to stand on. Because, again, you, 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 that foundation's not there. You, you haven't defined it, right? Your expectations with any of this, you define it. When I'm going to play basketball, this is the kind of player that I want to be. Not based on because I watch Chris Paul or not based on because I watched Isaiah Thomas. This is the player that I'm going to be, right? This is the kind of husband or wife that I'm going to be. This is the kind of business owner or entrepreneur that I'm going to be. That's what it's about. And you, when you define that, you've identified what that is and you have your true motivation for what that's going to be. That lead that starts you off into your first quarter, right? So the first quarter of your game, think of a basketball game. When you watch the NBA, what happens? You're one of the first things you do in the in the basketball game, particularly at a high level, is you want to test what the refs are going to call, right? So in the first quarter, you first start off. You you might drive to the basket. You're going to see. You go put the pressure on the defense, and you're going to see what the refs going to call. You drive down the lane and the dude hit you in the mouth and the ref don't call it. Oh, you 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 start getting a sense for it. This is how they go call the game. So this is how I gotta adjust how I play, right? You 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 start going to a rack and the guy barely touch you and, and the ref's right there on the call, or you're on defense and the guy starts driving by you and you just barely bump him and the ref's right there on you calling, or you mug the dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? He goes to the rack and you mug. What up, Arshan? Our Sean Collins know what I'm talking about with this. Uh, we played ball or something together when I, I was a young dude. Them dudes was old, but I was a young dude. <laughs> um, but, you know, when you, so you drive to the basket and then you foul somebody hard, right? And the ref don't call it. So you know you, can get, you might get away with a little bit more tonight. Now the next game may be totally different. So it's that same kind of analogy, y'all. So in the first quarter of the game, that's not the game's typically isn't won then, but you set the tone. You set the spirit for how the game's gonna go. You let the other team know. Like I told y'all, when we go to, you know, like some of these schools and stuff, and we know we've got the advantage on and talent and skill, we want to put our foot on their neck. And that's what you want to do in 2018. You don't want you don't want 2018 to think it's got a chance against you. You when you watch LeBron and them come out, right? He coming, he try, he coming to put his foot on your neck from the jump to make you understand that, nah, not today, Doc. No, not today. You're wrong one. You got to go down the street or you got to wait till the next game. But that's how you want 2018 to be for you. You want 2018 to look at you and be, oh, hell. Right? Not, oh, I can't wait to get to them because they go fold. First little bit of adversity. They haven't properly identified and, and defined what it is they're going to do. I want them. Just like we do. We pick out guys. I remember we used to play teams, man. And, you know, so you're starting out the game. You go out. They get ready to jump off. 
and I can look across and I see uh, my counterpart look scary, right? His knees buckling and stuff. Oh, I want him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, if he switch out on me, I'm, I'm ready to tear his you up. <laughs> you know what I mean? He looks he looks shaky. You know what I mean? That's the same way life does. If you look shaky, you come out shaky at the beginning of the game. That's who they come. That's how you see people that always are. You know, things are always happening because you look shaky, right? And I'm gonna go after the, the strong or go go after that weak. Once that weakness gets pointed out, so whether it's basketball, whether it's um, yourself personally with your personal endeavors, right? You go out there and you haven't identified and defined who you are, then you, you, that's how you find yourself attracting the wrong kind of people. It don't matter what you post on Facebook. You can post on Facebook whatever you want about uh, real men this and real women that and yada, 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 yada. At the end of the day, when you get done posting, right, the actions speak for themselves. Some folk post really good memes, but then their life don't match their meme. <laughs> After they done stole the mem or create the mem, whatever it is, they life don't match the mem. Right? And so part of that is they haven't identified and defined who they are. Right? They're trying to be what they think they should be or what someone may want them to be. Right? But they ha they don't have to take an ownership of that for yourself. And so even for your business, right? Again, you've got to define that. You got to know what kind of business you want to be in. You got to know why, right? You got to know why. To keep this, you know, conversation kind of moving and part of defining and kind of identifying is, um, you want to set clear priorities. And I've kind of been talking about this. Um, you know, you're, you're, so what are you prioritizing, right? You want to be married, okay? No one's saying you can't do what you want to do, but. You want a trustworthy person. You want a trustworthy woman. You want a trustworthy man. So why do you go to places that breed distrust? <laughs> the damn club at 1 o'clock in the morning breeds distrust. A lot of flodging going on. I know I was there. So if you go, if you want trustworthiness, why are you going to go to a place, a dark place, in the middle of the night? looking for trustworthiness. Not to say you can't have that. I'm sure there's been, you know, again, some of it's facetious because I'm sure there's been great uh, couples that have met in clubs and things. I'm just using the club as an example. There's a slew of other places. But if you go go to places where, you know, it doesn't match what it is that you're looking for and that becomes your environment, your environment's going to produce what it produces, if if you go and you sit, you you know this. Just give a basic example. If you go and you sit in, in a crack house, right? You go into a place in the city and you sit in a crack house, and you're looking for someone that's not going to be on crack. Now that again, that's obvious, right? But people do it. That's the that's the crazy thing. People do it. People will go into a crack house and hope that, uh, you know, girl, I hope he, you know, I, I'm looking for a man that ain't going to be on crack. Bro, I'm looking for shit, man. I need to get some thick and not on crack. <laughs> but where you at? You at the crack house. Okay, so what you think he or she going to be doing in there? Again, th that's the analogy. So if you haven't identified and you haven't defined what you are, then you just kind of go and you're in search of it all the time. You're always the seeker instead of being sought after. And so when you start 2018, if, if that's a goal of yours, You've got to have the courage, right? And all these things are about, you know, your courage and conquering your fear. You've got to have the courage to be in the environment where that's produced. Not when you're 50 and you can't lie and say I'm 25 in the club no more. That's not the time to do it. When you get the, the crow, uh, you know, legs and stuff coming off your eyes. And now you want to go, no, too late. It's too late then. Because you know why it's too late? It's just like in the grocery store when they bring out fresh fruit. There's some people that are there waiting on it, on the fresh fruit that come from the back. And some folk get there late after everybody done picked through all the fruit. Now, you might find one that's okay down at the bottom, 
But mostly what you find in, the, in the, uh, that fruit is the rotten ones that get left after the folk that were smart enough to wait there and catch what just come out. Now, y'all make sure you hey, listen. Now, I know I'm here in Memphis. Y'all make sure if, if y'all find out one of these pastors preaching this on Sunday, y'all make sure you let me know so I can get a, a, a little bit of that uh, tithe and offering BMW payment money, too. <laughs> um, but yes, you got to identify and you got to define what that is, right? And you got to set the clear priorities. What are you going to prioritize? You go prioritize my type all the time. What is your type? You know, what is it? Is it, you know, and is that a limitate? Is that a, an advantage for you or is that a limitation? Same when you're playing basketball. Clear priorities. What do we want to do? We want to be ahead of the other team by the end of the first quarter. We want to show them that they in for a fight with me, with my team. With your business, clear priorities. Here's what we got to do. I'm not going to spend all day on Facebook solely. I'm not going to spend all day trying to build you know, a logo. I'm not going to spend all day monkeying around with the website. Okay. There's no pride ownership in that kind of stuff. That's that's just standard stuff. I'm spending all day designing my business card. You gotta be out doing business. The biggest thing in business, you gotta be, you gotta set the priority of I wanna get out here and I wanna make sure that I've clearly defined the opportunity. If you're idea if you're you know selling something, you know, who's gonna buy this consistently and why? What problem am I solving? Right? What problem am I solving for someone? And is it enough of a problem that it caused enough of a pain point that someone's going to come to me for a solution and pay me for that solution and hopefully pay continuously that there's enough of a market? So y'all see how this all kind of correlates? So it you, you must do that in each uh, area when you talk about identification. Let's go back to it even just uh, personally, when you talk about personal identification and things like that. So I was given uh, the idea of someone that wants to be married. So you want to be married at some point, 2018, or going down the line. And now, you know, you've you know, identified it. Um, you, you've defined what it is that you want. Um, now, you know, and we'll get into this some on, on the next show is that's where you start planning. Okay. Um, but just to keep with identification, um, you want to then begin building a rhythm. All right. And this is kind of the last area of identification that I'm going to get into with y'all uh, for this particular podcast in part one here for identification. Um, you want to be able to set the tone with the proper rhythm, you know, and, and rhythm comes into play. So in basketball, um, if you get off to a good rhythm, right? You know, it feels good for those that have played. You know what I mean by that. You know, and if you haven't played, you know, maybe you've been in the band or maybe you've been in dance or you've been in cheerleading, whatever it is, right? You've been in music, you know that, especially with music, you know that getting to the proper rhythm is critical. It's uber critical, man. And so you get into a rhythm, you know, in the basketball game where you feel comfortable, you can get the kind of shot that you want on offense. Defensively, you feel like you've got a sense of where they're trying to go and what they're trying to do so you can impede that uh, and be a, a, a block to that, so to speak, for them to be able to score on you, right? So all that is critical in basketball. Personally, it's good to get to a good rhythm. It breeds Rhythm breeds confidence, right? And it's the confidence. You know, I talked earlier about conquering the fears and the anxieties and things like that. The other side of that is the confidence, you got to have the confidence then to um, to keep progressing. That your your skill just uh, continues to grow. In basketball, see in the NBA, everybody can play. I tell you, everybody in the NBA that's healthy can play. If any of them walked into the, any of these rec centers around here, they they be tearing dudes up, right? But in the NBA, it's about confidence. You know, you get playing time and things like that, but you got to have confidence when you're out there, confidence in your shot, confidence in your entire game, your ability to handle the ball, rebound the ball, um, set screens, uh, be a good teammate, you know, make shots, 
defend the paint, defend the perimeter, understand the schemes on each end. When you build that kind of confidence, it just breeds itself. You know, and y'all know, it, you know, when you're doing endeavors and you're feeling real good about it, right? It, it becomes easier. It slows down. That's where you see where a, a guy who gets hot in the NBA, he's making a lot of shots, the game starts slowing down for you. And when you slow the game down, right, at least in your mind, uh, perception-wise, it becomes that much easier to read and react. Same thing personally. You slow the game down. Same thing with your business. You're not running from business to business all helter-skelter, you know, trying to jump on trends and do all this kind of thing. What up? I got my cousin, Lisa. What's going on? How you doing? Elliot, yeah, man, I'm going to check my email too, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, but, yeah, you can't be helter-skelter running all over the place. You know, you got to develop a rhythm, right? Your business with yourself personally, develop a rhythm. When you're with somebody, don't have all this fear of well, what they might do with this and they might do. No, just get to know people. I tell you this: um, when you talk about things personally, as far as identifying and 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 uh, defining, you know your your endeavors and things like that, and the reason you want to do things. Here's the thing that I tell my uh, female family members all the time: um, nobody. If you're around somebody 48 hours straight, okay, y'all listen close. For those that, now I've been married over 10 years, okay, ain't no secret, everybody know, right? I don't play single and all that kind of stuff on here. Folks know who I am. Um, if it is extremely difficult and unlikely for anybody to hide things for 48 hours straight when you're right there. Here's what happens within 48 hours of something, Okay. Within 48 hours, I'll use me for example. In, within 48 hours, whatever is looking for me ain't going to stay away for 48 hours. Straight. Nope. No, it ain't. Whatever's looking for me, <laughs> okay, ain't staying away for 48 hours straight. Okay? Do I need to say that again? Whatever's looking for me ain't staying away for 48 hours straight. I ain't going to do it. At some point, it or that person is coming, is looking for me, all right? I'm going to flip that. Within 48 hours, whatever I'm looking for, I can't stay away from. Ho, ho, ho. Whatever, I, let me say that again. Whatever I'm looking for, right, I can't stay away from for 48 hours straight. Mm -mm. For a night... Uh, you know, just going out to dinner and movie and all that dry stuff some of y'all do. <laughs> um, I ain't gonna say it's dry. It's cool. You know, I ain't gonna, whatever. Um, I, you know, I, I can, I can stay away from something for four hours. And I can keep stuff away from me for four hours. 48 hours? Mm -mm. Nah. You got a problem with drugs? You ain't staying away from that for 48 hours. And it ain't gonna leave you alone for 48 hours. You messing around with this or that or you know, wherever, she ain't staying away for 48 hours or he ain't staying away for four, whatever it is. Okay. So what I mean by that is when you talk about this from a personal standpoint is um, make it an endeavor as you're going down your process. And I'm kind of speaking to ladies, I guess, here now. Um, but not I guess I am. <laughs> I'm speaking to ladies. So um, you got to have at some point, when you feel like you're going down that path, you got to spend 48 hours straight with a person, okay? Because, you know, and whatever's going to try to get a hold to somebody is coming through that phone or it's coming through that door, okay? And whatever he's trying to get to, he's going through that phone or, you know, or that computer, whichever one, and then he's going to that door, okay? And that's going to be your eye opener, Okay? Same thing with your business, okay? Take time, spend 48 hours straight in your business, okay? 48 hours straight. Whatever you're trying to get to, whatever tries to interrupt that, some folk will know you're working on your business and then they be petty and be trying to get in the way and they try to call and do all and talk about their problems and all this other garbage, right? And they know you're busy working on your stuff. I get it all the time, okay? Folk... Folk just love petty. It became a popular term. Folk learned how to spell it, I think, two or three years ago. 
<laughs> like melanin and petty. You know, the words that folk learned to spell two or three years ago on social media. And now everybody's petty. All right. So folks try to be that way. Okay. All right. So with your 48 hours with your business, you know, whatever you're trying to then get to that's outside of that, it's going to be hard for you to stay away. Whatever distraction and whatever distractions that you're, you're accustomed to dealing with, not going to stay away from you for 48 straight hours. They're just not going to do it. So as you identify and you're, you're defining and you're setting your priorities for 2018, make sure that as you go beyond that, you know, make sure that you have this understanding. Make sure that you understand that getting into a rhythm is, is the key to it, right? And then understand that 48-hour rule. I call it first 48 too. <laughs> uh, that first 48 is lethal, right? When it was on the show, shout out to Carol and Mason and everybody. Um, but it, you know, it, it's tough, right? So you got that first 48 still exists and make sure that you engage in that again, whether it's sports, uh, in basketball, right? Whether it's personal or whether it's professional, right? So listen, th that's kind of concluding us for part one. Um, I hope you got value out of you know today's dialogue. Um, you can subscribe to the podcast. I'm here on Facebook Live. You guys on Facebook Live, make sure that you go to the I Really Mean It Podcast dot com. Um, you can go to SoundCloud, uh, Google Play, what else? Spotify, uh, iTunes, all that kind of stuff to be able to listen to the podcast. Uh, and then it's here on my Facebook page. So on next week, uh, next podcast will be part two which will be planning. So at that point, you've identified, you defined, you got your priorities. Now you got to start planning, you know, for your success. I'm RGB. This is the I Really Mean It podcast. I'm your host, RGB. Listen, I want y'all to have a great weekend, man. Don't get distracted. Get ready for 2018. And uh, if I can help you, feel free to communicate with me. I love to help whether it's your business, if I can help you personally, whatever it is, I just like to be a resource. So I'll see y'all later. Peace.